Hey guys, let's do something really fun today. I'm going to show you the method that I use in order to antique drawing paper. This is Ronnie Williford, and you've reached the artist's outpost. The way this whole process developed, I was looking for some unusual textures and things that I could scan and put behind my digital drawings. I didn't have anything in mind specifically, I was just sort of experimenting. But what I landed on was this very aged, old, scroll-looking paper surface, uh, kind of with tears and some unusual uh, strata running through it, very warm color. And it just came out looking so cool, I started drawing on it for real. Now this is the same paper I was using uh, during this last uh, 2017 Inktoberfest event that was taking place on Facebook. And I think everyone was way more excited about my paper than they were about the drawings I was doing. Now you can take this process and change it around and kind of make it your own. Uh, but for the time being, uh, this is how I do it, so let's get started. I tend to keep a pretty good stock of paper that has a tone to it or a color. I do so much work out on location that I find it really fatiguing to be at the zoo or outside somewhere and drawing on white paper. The sun hitting the white paper is so hard on your eyes, this glare gives you a headache by the end of the day. And the toned paper kind of takes the sting out of that. So I keep a lot of it around. I found this spiral pad of toned paper in my stock and found that it's got a nice perforation. I can just tear it out of the book. It's about a 9 by 12 size page. What you want to do is take this paper and do the thing that you've been told your whole life never to do with drawing paper. Wad it up into a ball and press it as tight as you possibly can. Get the folds into it really good and hard. And then very carefully and gently unfold the page and flatten it out with your hands. Just spread it out. Do this to about 12 sheets of paper, or how many ever sheets of paper you feel like you'd like to experiment with. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make about half a pot of really strong coffee. I have some old decaf in the cupboard that nobody ever drinks, and I tend to use that. Just use whatever you've got and uh, make sure it's nice and dark. The next thing you'll want to do is preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like 93 degrees Celsius. Once your oven is preheated, get a pan that pretty well fits your drawing paper that you can lay in the bottom of it. Pour coffee over the top of the page and make sure that you get both sides of it really wet. Take that pan, put it in the oven, and bake it for 20 minutes. When your time is up, take the pan out of the oven and very carefully, using a spatula or something to help you lift it up, take the paper out of the pan and lay it on a dry cookie sheet. At this point, I tend to take my old coffee grounds that are left over and I sprinkle them over the page, kind of rub them in a little bit. You've got to be sort of careful. The paper is really tender, but uh, I find that it makes for a really cool matrix in the page. Now, take one of your clean, uh, new papers and soak it in the coffee pan. Make sure you get it good and wet on both sides. And put both of those pans in the oven and bake for 20 minutes. Just keep repeating this process until you get all of your papers baked and dried. As the uh, dry sheets come out on the cookie sheet, just dust the coffee grounds off into the garbage and set them aside. They'll still be a little bit wet and they'll need to dry overnight. This next stage I like to take outside and it's usually something I do the next day. Um, I use a candle 
to burn the four corners off of the page. And then very lightly in just two or three little strategic spots, I'll burn one of the edges on the paper. Um, this is something that's extremely easy to overdo. You burn the edges too much, you're looking like you're doing 1970s decoupage. Just hit two or three little spots, make them nice and small. And I tend to use a cloth of some kind to rub the edges, make sure that the embers are completely out from the paper. Otherwise, it's just going to keep going till it eats your whole page. Now at this point, we're pretty much finished, and you've got a few little choices you can make. I tend to take a cloth and rub each piece front and back and make sure I've got any coffee grounds residue rubbed off, and I make sure that the soot is rubbed in really well. If you like, you can spray each page with a little workable fixative and lock it all down, uh, or in my case, I have a tendency to stack them all up. I like to stack them nice and even and press them under books or between two boards with bungee cords and set them aside and just let them get really flat again. And uh, they're kind of ready to go whenever I'm ready to draw. Speaking of that, since we've got some new drawing paper, uh, maybe we should draw something on it. All right, time to get some drawing done. I've chosen what I think is a really cool subject. It seemed like it might be appropriate for this style of drawing paper. This is a cicada that I found in the grass last summer. I thought it would be fun to take its biological structure and stylize it into something that would make a cool land vehicle or maybe a aircraft or something. Because I don't have a plan yet, I was kind of thinking Maybe I would establish some volumes and position the cicada on the page compositionally very lightly in graphite before I make any sort of commitment in ink. Uh, I can start nailing down its structure from there. Oops, before I start, I need my lucky drawing hat. I need one of my lucky drawing hats. There we go. That's going to make the drawing better. Okay. I think I'd like to, I've got kind of a diagonal thing happening. Let's go from about here to about here. That's not a bad size establishment. The exoskeleton of insects make them really, really uh, an excellent drawing exercise if you haven't attempted them before. It's very much like drawing a car or, or an airplane. They, they're uh, kind of structurally hard and smooth and shiny. It's really, really fun to try and emulate their little bits and parts. God, this is such an interesting, it's an interesting structure where this curves this way and then it comes back that way and then this thorax looks like it's it almost looks like it's got a fold in it right here god these are such a pretty little shape this is one of my favorite insects in the summer they're noisy little guys they really they fill the trees with sound but I love that. I love having them in the trees and I love the sounds that they make. Okay, we're broken into our three body parts here. The wings kind of come apart at the ends in the very back. I wonder what it would be like to bind all that together into one shape. That would be a very scarab-like thing to do. Let's look at that, see what that looks like. We're just playing here, we're just having fun. For some reason, I have this really strong impulse to take his legs 
and bring them out as though he were alive rather than a little a little carcass I wonder if I should do that or if I should go ahead and fold his legs up under his body let's uh, you know what let's let's bring the legs out this little leg will come forward right there and this one comes back again that's not occurring for real that's just that's just me following my impulses so let's switch over to the ink now I've got a brand new micron pen I love the way these things look I'm gonna roll back some of that graphite with a with a kneaded eraser got a little heavy-handed there let's take another close look at our model see what we're looking at this eye that's facing us is very prominent there we go Got some reflected light under there. We have some cool choices at this point now that we're committing to ink. You could deviate from your initial shapes. Your, you know, your structure is nailed like you're you're locked in with your head positions and your sizes and your composition and you've got the opportunity if you want to play a little bit and and change the shapes around and just kind of make it your own it's one thing if you're trying to what do I want to say? If you're if you're rendering a biological specimen, you'd certainly want to be a little bit more cautious about deviating from the the shape of the thing. But if you're just playing and having a good time, you can go ahead and establish the shape and get it looking the way you want, you know, lightly in graphite. And then when you come back to ink, you can start exaggerating and pushing things around I like these micron markers I really like sharpie markers too it's fun just to go direct with sharpies that pretty much lays the head in and I don't see a reason why we would need to say much more than that that just looks so cool on this paper I'll tell you something else you can do uh, you can use an actual real crow quill on this paper and use, you know, brown inks and continue the antiquing uh, kind of style. Now that I've kind of got that head at least started pretty well, I'm going to go ahead and lay in the thorax. I know that uh, car manufacturers, you know, uh, guys who design for car companies and for motorcycle companies and people who design vehicles it's very common for them to have little insect collections and seashell collections they're always using nature to help them design the structure of the things that they're creating if you're looking to come up with interesting designs that are unusual and maybe some things you've never thought of. Looking to nature is always the way to go. 
I like this little paint pattern that's happening on his back. It's got a little white swatch in there, and I'm not entirely positive if that's due to the little guy being deceased or if it's, you know, something that actually occurs on him when he's alive. A lot of my hatching with this pen, I, you know, I'm certainly trying to establish values, but I draw in the direction of the curves of his body because I'm also describing structure and letting you know what the form is. Now that I've got that shaded in there that way, I've got this impulse that I want to go ahead and put a tone on this side of his head. And that's so similar to this tone that I'm going to have to darken this a little bit. Darken this a little bit. And I'm going to turn that away from the eye, darkening that a little bit. It's going to give me an opportunity to correct that a little. There we go. All right. I'm probably being a little too descriptive. I'm getting all hung up in my model because I'm enjoying looking at my model that I'm overdrawing a little bit. I'm, I'm chopping things into details a little too much and I need to loosen up. I need to keep an eye on the whole picture overall and stop breaking things into little parts. So let's stir this together a little bit. There we go. It's still broken up into parts a little too much, but that's okay. I'm, I'm excited about the exploration. And I need to think about the whole drawing. I think we've got the body pretty well locked in. Start, we'll start delineating those wing shapes a little bit. I've got to be really careful to make sure I'm simplifying. I don't have to follow my model exactly when I'm not rendering a a biological specimen. I'm just playing with the shape of him a little bit. Coming up with something a little more stylized. They're just so interesting and it's so much fun to start thinking about all the cool little parts that make their biology function. I'm going to pull the tips of his wings together so that he'll be kind of a, a lipstick shape. And Rather than getting in there and getting too descriptive, let's kind of break it into pieces lightly here. Now we've got a bottom, this is the bottom boom of the other wing. So the struts for that wing will go the other way. Let me fill in the rest of the struts for the top wing. Where they come together, that line is so light my inclination is to darken it a little bit for the sake of style. Now we'll go ahead and establish those legs where I altered them from what the model looks like. I went ahead and designed them in as if he were actually alive. I just love the way these things are designed. And whenever I get the opportunity, I really love collecting little specimens and keeping them in little boxes and jars and setting them aside. I'm always picking up bones and sticks and little skulls and little... Uh, I'm always finding little dry lizards and frogs and things. And they're like little mummies that you can come back to 
and use them to study and to kind of learn about anatomical structure. And if you spend time drawing those things enough, you get to where you can almost emulate that stuff out of your head. It becomes a muscle memory that you can call upon. And I think that's pretty cool. Go ahead and bring that shadow part of the body down. That doesn't show very apparent on my model, but it needs to be there to support that leg. There we go. From a design point of view, this is something that it wouldn't occur in nature, but I, it does occur in nature, but it's, I have exaggerated it here for the sake of design, and that's this S curve that, that uh, comes up and then swoops down and comes over again. It's a, it's a way of using rhythm in line to make a pleasing shape and carry your eye through your composition uh, in a way that's very comfortable to look at. Um, I think I've drawn this leg too small. I'm going to have to go ahead and change my my original lay in I was unaware of that when I first laid that in but it's okay got it's the reason you go in and and uh, establish a graphite map to follow if you come to a bump in the road or you know you, you can alter your path and still get to where you're going because this is a drawing, I tend to go fairly a la prima and just go and just go right for it and start drawing. If this were a little painting, I would have taken the time to have established a little thumbnail. I would have designed the composition and checked the values and uh, pre-planned how things were going to lay out in advance in, in little tiny drawings before going directly to the canvas or to the panel. But since we're beginning with drawing here, it seems redundant to do a thumbnail and then do a drawing from the thumbnail. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's as logical as anything. Uh, anything that helps you to plan and prepare, I guess is okay. I think I'm going to correct this leg too. I've pulled it too far out to the side. Let's bring it out here where it really belongs. This is more correct. Keeping in mind that I am stylizing it, but I'm going to have him just about touching the edge of the paper. Is that a compositional tangent? It might be. The thing is, it's art and it doesn't hurt anybody. Make one of those compositional mistakes, eh, it's not gonna, not gonna kill anyone. When I'm doing figure drawing, uh, I get real irritated at folks who leave off the hands and feet. Uh, even if you're just drawing little triangles and paddles and shapes, you should include what that looks like. Make sure that you're being clear that at least even to yourself, you understand what you mean uh, by putting in those hands and feet. I think, uh, I think it's important during your time when you're studying to go ahead and just include everything. It's less important if you're playing. I'm going to go ahead and Drop that in right there. Let's darken that edge. That whole thing should be really, really dark. Okay. That gets the structure in there. That pretty much pulls the insect onto the page. There's one more thing I find really important, and I'm going to do that next. 
The last thing I like to do in a vignette like this is to establish a shadow underneath in order to glue it down to the ground. Otherwise, you just get this feeling like the, the figure is just floating in the air. And, uh, you know, you've spent all this time establishing shading on the figure. Um, you should go ahead and take the time to put a shadow underneath it so that you glue it down and it has a, a hard place to stand. Uh, first of all, where do we want the light to come from? Are we bringing the light in from this way? Uh, if we bring the light in from that way, we might be establishing a shadow that comes this direction. Let's get a, a shape underneath the, the eyes there. Come in from this leg. Casting kind of off that direction and the wings probably casting even further out. Now this isn't something you have to be super careful with. Just give your, give your character something to stand on. Want to give the indication that my figure is solid, my subject has enough solidity to it that it would cast a shadow. This Micron pen is probably not the smartest thing to use in rendering shadows. It's starting to get a little crabby with me. And there are other instances when I might go in and be very, very precise with the shadows. But we're just playing today. going to give an indication of this. There we go. That's not terribly dark, but it gives a feeling of solidity to the cicada. It even looks like he could be reflecting in a mirror or something. Now the last thing I think I'll do, I've got a white pencil and I'm just going to put in some highlights. I'm going to highlight the eyes. This is a very, like a, a shiny surface insect. It seems like a shame not to go in and hit some highlight areas. There we go. All right, make him shine down his back a little bit. Like he's a new Corvette. There. Now where these two wings cross each other, I'm going to Double the, I'm going to double the surfaces there by folding them over each other. I hit the top edges of these wing struts. And the very top edge of the boom. And the top edge of that boom is kind of hidden, so I'm not going to get too hung up about that. Okay. I think that kind of takes care of it. This should give you a pretty good idea of what it's like to work on this antique drawing paper. It's really fun and really interesting to experiment with. Try some different mediums on it and see what you come up with. Colored pencils or crow quill with some natural colored inks. Uh, really. The sky's the limit on the things that you can do with it. Might even be fun to make some larger 
uh, pieces of paper and do some more major work on it. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Until we get the opportunity to spend time together again, everyone stay safe and make your paper smell like coffee.